Good afternoon. When I was a little girl, my mom used to correct my sentences mid-speech. She couldn't help it. She was an English teacher. From an early age, she taught me that words have power, that words matter, and that they have influence in our lives. Years later, this was affirmed by my own personal work as a teacher, as an author, and as a parent. Today, I'm going to re you to a word that I've struggled with most of my life, the word, the concept, enough. See, I am a recovering perfectionist. Some of you in the audience also know me as a little bit of a control freak. Enough for me has never been enough. I could never do enough in a day to be successful. I can never accomplish enough to feel achieved. I can never have enough to be fulfilled. I can never do enough to deserve respect. And perhaps the most poisonous of all, I could never be enough to be loved. Even as I stand here today, fulfilling a longtime dream of becoming a TEDx speaker, the voice inside my head, that nasty, hypercritical, judgmental inner gremlin is still saying, not enough. It plays like a song on repeat, not enough, not enough, not enough. And in times of stress or crises, that inner critic, she only gets louder. You're not enough. You don't have enough. You'll never be enough. That's enough. I'm inviting you on a journey with me today to reframe this word, to reclaim this word, and to lean into a practice that is both uncomfortable and empowering, to take back the power this word has over us and to redefine what it really means for us. To do that, I'm going to share the thought work of three experts with you, because after all, they say good things come in threes, right? I first met John A. Cuff right here in Tampa Bay. He was keynote speeching, um, and I was impressed with the way that he held a room. I was impressed with the fact that he used humor to get his point across. I was impressed with the fact that he knew how to use technology to integrate his crowd. But more importantly, every time I've seen him then and since, he encouraged everyone in his audience to lean into and examine our own relationship and perspectives about leadership. His latest book is aptly named Soundtracks, and it's about the ways that we overthink everything, about the stories that we tell ourselves on rotation, regardless of the truth or the data that supports it. In fact, he calls those negative soundtracks broken ones. And he reminds us that those broken soundtracks, they're not going to evolve into something else, not on their own. It's up to us to change them. But to do that, we first have to acknowledge what they actually are. We have to be willing to lean in and listen to the negative, awful things when food saving to and about ourselves. I'm going to ask you all to do something that I never do. I'm going to ask you all to should all over yourself. I want you to find the notebook and pen, and I want you to write down as many statements that begin with the phrase, I should be. I should be making more money. I should be further along in my career by now. I should be a more patient parent. I should be able to handle a pandemic. I want you to hold on to those should statements. We're going to revisit them in just a moment. 
The second expert I'd like to introduce you to is Dr. Judith Orloff. I first met her at the recommendation of my therapist, who very early on realized that I was shooting all over myself, that I was refusing to accept my current reality. See, Dr. Orloff talks about the power of surrender, stating that there is no real peace, happiness, or joy without it. I've got to be honest, when I first heard that, this was my first thought. I mean, I hated this concept. To find contentment, I had to lean into the very thing I hated most. Surrender this. Like any strong-willed, southern, stubborn woman, I fought this one, and hard. See, surrender to me sounded like a terrible idea. It sounded like defeat. It sounded like failure. And that inner gremlin, man, she quickly swooped in and said, I was terrible. I was defeated. I was a failure. See, the tricky thing about surrender is that you have to feel the negative stuff before you can move through it. You have to lean into what Brene Brown calls the messy middle. And even though I was good at listening to those soundtracks, I wasn't good at surrendering to them. I was doing what Dr. Orloff says, letting the will get in the way of my destiny. In other words, I was getting in my own way. Perhaps you can relate. Surrender is not about dropping all of your boundaries. It's not about letting people walk all over you. It's not even about giving up or failing. It's about having boundaries in your life. It's about listening to your intuitive voice. And it's about doing what you can to control the outcome. And then, like the famous Disney princess Elsa, you've got to let it go. You've got to let go of that outcome knowing that you had enough. You did enough, and the rest is literally out of your hands. See, soundtracks only have the power over you when you're not willing to identify them and surrender to them. And I've learned the hard way over time that through surrender, you may not always get what you expect or even what you want, but you will always get what you need. The third expert I'd like to introduce you to is Gary Zukoff. Some of you may have read his book, The Seed of the Soul, that talks about creating a more meaningful life, coming from an alignment of your values, your actions, your words, and your intentions. But the thing about Zukoff's work that most stuck out to me was that he said that research Data shows that the best way to deal with negativity is not to avoid it, but to observe it without judgment and without reaction. And then to consciously, intentionally label each of those negative feelings and replace them with positive, compassionate, and affirming thoughts. So we're going to do that together today. I want you to revisit your should statements and take a few moments to label the feelings or emotions that each express. How many of you, by a show of hands, wrote the words anger, love, or sadness? How many of you wrote other words by a show of hands? Congratulations. Regardless of what you wrote and regardless of what you felt, according to Zukov, you're a multidimensional human being. 
You've also just begun what Zukov says is the most difficult thing that most humans will ever do. That is accepting your experiences and owning your emotions. So of that list, I want you to choose just one. One that you are willing to, in this season of your life, in this moment, observe, get close with, and lean into the negativity and examine what you're really saying to yourself. I want you to set up an intention to change that soundtrack to something that is both kind and compassionate to you. To stop shooting all over yourself. To surrender to enough. Now let's be real. Maybe you're not ready for surrender. Maybe you're not ready to acknowledge your soundtracks. Maybe you're human. You see, this work also takes a readiness to receive. It takes a willingness to move through it and a stubbornness to stick with it. And it's like a practice. Every time you keep falling, you have to come back to it. And though it's painful sometimes, and what my friends have labeled brutal, beautiful, brutal, it's necessary. It is valuable. It is meaningful. And it carries information for you. As Zukov reminds us, the pain carries information for you. So where's the hopeful message here? Where's the enough? I mean, here we are, it's an inspirational, motivational day, and Liz is talking about pain, vulnerability, and negativity. Thanks, Beth. The enough, the hope, is you. The enough is the work that you choose to put in. The enough is the definition that you decide and the journey that you define. Because we as human beings, we have the power to know when enough is enough. We as women have enough within us to redefine enough. And we as leaders are going to change our soundtracks starting today. Because we are enough, I am enough, and that's enough. Thank you.